Greetings everybody, Barry from H&W Machine Repair here to do another video for you. Today's video, we are going to be disassembling and reassembling the cradle assembly. Now there's three main reasons you may need to do this. Number one, the feed drive worm gear right here is stripped out. That happens sometimes when something jams up and may take a side off, or more commonly, someone in the history of the machine never bothered to turn off the quill down feed. So this just sat there and ran continuously. The other reason would be this gear right here, which is the feed bevel pinion broke. And again, something jammed up and this thing just popped and broke a tooth or broke in half. The third reason is one of the tangs on the cradle itself broke off. Normally it's the bottom one. Usually that would happen if someone was shifting it without it being turned on and they just hit it so hard that this broke. So, but those are three reasons you would commonly do this. So, let's go ahead and get started with the disassembly. Now, some now, many of the parts, some of the parts you may need is a 916th wrench, 8th inch Allen wrench, flathead screwdriver, then you may need some of these. Got my trusty cook hammers, a couple punches, and a small, Allen, uh, small um, crescent wrench. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the nut on top. You will use a 916 wrench. You'll notice you do that, uh, you're not going to do that. So, you're probably going to need a vise. Now, if you have a copper jaw vise, that's great. If you don't, you can take a standard vise, put a, a rag in there. You don't have to go crazy tight on this. You just want it tight enough to hold it. And there we go. All right, got it. Okay, so, yep, a little tighter than that. Sometimes these things are very tight, sometimes they're not too bad at all. This one's very tight. Well, we're gonna go tighter. There we go, got it. Take that off, take out your vise. See, all the teeth are still fine. You can unthread your nut. And you can see it is a lock nut. There's a washer that sits on top. Take it out. Now, we can tap this down. So I use a rubber mallet. Right now I'm just tapping it down to get clearance because we want to get this out, this screw out here. Sometimes this screw is extremely tight and if it is, you use the same procedure, you'll put it in on the edge and, and catch it right here and here to hold this steady. Let's see how this one is. All right, this one was not tight at all, which it was actually a little too loose. So just as well we're taking it off. Again, you have your screw your little washer. Okay, now we have everything apart to the point where we can start tearing it apart. So, that, what I do next is again, I'll put this in my vise, it doesn't have to be tight. I just wanna be able to get things apart. And we're going to be taking this, the, uh, I call it the uh, cluster gear assembly. It's not really a cluster gear, but it's all, these gears are kind of connected to each other my punch and you may want to put something underneath to catch it in case it drops on you in this case Virginia is going to do that for me there you go now once you get it out you notice you have the two gears and there's a key there are several keys in here you need to keep track normally this key will stay in occasionally like the last one I did it fell out and I was searching on the floor to find it so that that aside and then you see the bigger up here in the top you see there's a key right there, and there, the um, housing that has to come out next. So we're gonna tap it down. See, and there you go, that's not quite tight enough. Okay. And there, okay. Here's this assembly. And there you go, you notice <laughs> the key fell out. See, it's a tiny little key. So, again, you wanna keep track of everything. 
set that aside, and the key beside it. At this point, you can just grab the bevel gear, just lift it right out, and it'll set right there. Okay, next we are going to remove this whole shaft assembly in one piece. Now it co everything will come out this direction towards where the bevel gears are. But you have a set screw in here. This is where you need your eighth inch Allen. You do not need to remove it completely, but you need to loosen it. And now we are going to knock the assembly through. This one just came right out. Set your cradle aside, obviously you're gonna clean parts and everything. This one's pretty clean already. Okay, at this point, we're ready to remove this gear. And if you see, it's kind of tight, so you may need to use your screwdriver, something to get a hold of it. And you notice a third key right here. This key sometimes is difficult to get out. And if it does, I use a pair of, I call them side cutters, grab it, pull it out. Okay, once that's off, the next assembly is ready to come apart. So you can see it is a brass gear. And you notice it, the little notch. That's important for down the road. But it's a, the, um, the brass spacer and the internal spacer. Set those aside. Next, you have a washer and your brass gear, same thing. See how, there you go. Your washer, keyed. And now it's the part that is the, most likely the culprit while you're tearing, while you're tearing this apart. So you can put it in a vise just to where you can get a hold of it. There you go. And if that key's in there, it stays. You do not need to remove it. Okay, now we have it completely disassembled. We're going to replace whatever parts we need. We're gonna reassemble it. Now we're ready to reassemble our cradle assembly. Now you're gonna notice that this one's broken because the one I was doing originally was needed to finish a job. And this is one I have, but this is one of the main reasons you would be doing this operation is to replace this cradle housing. So we will start putting our assemblies back together. First thing you do is you'll take your shaft here and your brass gear, slide it on, and you'll note sometimes this will slide right on, sometimes it will not. If it won't, you can take a um, sleeve of some sort on. Next will be your um, spacer and you kind of tell sometimes you can see a little bit of a mark on here to where it actually runs against this part um, in case you're kind of curious as to where it goes. So that slides on. Okay our next section will be the um, this little pin which goes in here. What I like to do when I put together I might put just a touch of grease on here Maybe just a little bit on the shaft. Okay, so we will put on our sleeve. And you notice the keyway right there. And this pin actually will, of course, it will help if I put it on the correct direction. I have my apologies. Putting it on backwards. Getting ahead of myself. There you go. Now you see the little indentation. And it will fit in there and it should fit snug. And if it doesn't, you can do the same thing. There you go. Now you have your assembly. Everything this spins as it should. The next part to go on will be our little gear. You put your keyway back in. Again, it's like everything on these, sometimes things go right in, sometimes they do not. There we go. 
Now this, you can use a rubber mallet. Snug it down. Everything still turns. You put your screw and your washer back in. If you want, you can use the tiny bit of blue Loctite in here. I normally don't really feel like it's necessary. All right, so we have our assembly back together. It goes in the same way that it came out, which is from this side. So we slide in and see where the set screw goes. The reason that's important is you see the hole there and the hole there. They need to line up when you go back together again. So just kind of eyeball it. In. Okay, now you notice the hole goes through right where it should. And if you can see in there, I'm not sure you can on the video, you can see where your witness mark is from your set screw. Everything spins freely. So, before I put the set screw in, I do that last in case I need to make one final adjustment. So we're now ready to go back together with our, I call it the vertical shaft. So our first part that goes back on will be this shaft going onto the keyway. And just kind of, again, same thing if you need to get it in there. Now you notice this isn't all the way. So if you have a vise, copper jaws are nice. Uh, my particular machine here doesn't have copper jaws. So we're going to just put a rag in here. Put it to where the gear is. Not tight, obviously. There you go. We're back on. Everything's good there. Now, the way this will work, this will slide up in here, so it's the same thing. If you want, a tiny bit of grease will not hurt anything at all. Now, before you do this, you're going to want to put this gear back in to where it sets. And you're going to want to try to line your keyway up with the keyway right there as close as you can. Keyways line up. Got your little key. This sometimes is the most tricky part of the whole operation. in. Our next step will be our washer, our nut, and 16th wrench. Notice I'm just kind of holding the gear with my hand. This is a uh, locking nut, so it should be okay. All right, now you see how I'm a little snug there. So, I probably need to move my gear in a little bit more. There we go. Nice and smooth, we can put our set screw back in. show you something if you really bear down on this you can lock that up tight as a drum so you're not going to do that let's go till it touches and you're good so there we go we have now reassembled disassembled and reassembled your cradle assembly so please press the bell icon for notifications and please subscribe to our youtube channel have a great day